What's going on everybody? I'm doing a last minute boat camping trip that I planned, well I didn't plan it at all actually, I just decided it's Friday afternoon, where can I go? I'm up here in northern Kentucky right now and I've never done the Kentucky River so I just threw a bunch of camping gear in the boat. I haven't camped in years so hopefully I got everything. If I didn't I guess I'll figure it out. But the Kentucky River is um, it's a pretty narrow river. It flows from the Ohio all the way to Frankfort, Kentucky, the capital. And Frankfort's pretty cool. I haven't been there in a long time, but there's, you know, little restaurants and shops and B&Bs and stuff like that. But I don't plan on doing that this time. This is just, let me see how far I can get. It's about 60 miles by boat. You have to go through several locks. I think there's four. And the locks are only open at certain times and certain days. I believe it's uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday from 10 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. So since it's pretty late in the day, I don't know how many locks I can get through, but I'd like to get through at least two, maybe three. Find a good campsite, and I don't know if I'm going to hammock camp or sleep on the boat or maybe pitch a tent, but we'll see how it goes. This should be fun. So I just launched right over there at the boat ramp. That's the Ohio River. And here is the mouth of the Kentucky River, which is where I'm headed. Now there's a pretty good debris field. I guess that means it's slack tide. That's saltwater speak for pooling stage up here on the Ohio and the Kentucky. But I don't know if you can see it all that well, but I'm having to go kind of slow through here because there's logs and debris everywhere. Yeah, it looks like we're coming to our first lock. So I will try to get a hold of the lock master, I believe on channel 13, we'll see. Well, that was him up on the hill. He's weed eating, mowing grass. He yelled at me, he said, come on up. So we'll give this a go. All right, so after sitting here for about 20 minutes, it looks like the Lockmaster is walking down here from his landscaping duties. So hopefully we're gonna be able to lock through here soon. Well, that was interesting. He just came down and told me he closes here in a minute. So I'm not sure exactly what time it is. But he said lock number two and on up. There's 730, so he must be sometime earlier. I'm thinking 5 o'clock, but that's news to me. So the idea is you hold on to these ropes and as you come up, the current's gonna push us around, so gotta wear your PFD. That's regulation in all locks, per the Coast Guard. Uh, some locks have lines like these that you hold on to. Some, I think you use your own, but yeah, I don't know if you can see these blocks back here behind me. I don't know the exact year, but I did read about the fact that these were all hand cut and laid in here, and these locks were built back in the 1800s by German immigrants. This was all for commerce and barge traffic. Thanks, man. I appreciate you. Back underway. Let's see if we can make up some time. So we are burning daylight. And I don't want to have to be finding a campsite in the dark.
so we're here at Lock 2. Looks like I've traveled about 27 miles according to the GPS. And I didn't even have to call, he's already opening up the gate, which is nice. How you doing? Good. It looks like I just made it to lock two. He's about to close. Uh, it's 7.15 and they close at 7.30, so we'll get through here and start looking for a campsite. That's a lot of water coming through. He said he was gonna lift me quick. He wasn't kidding. These guys wanna go home. So yeah, I was gonna come back, head back tomorrow. Okay. Have any idea what time you'll be around? Well, I was gonna try to make it up to Frankfurt right. and then head on back, but I know y'all try to wrap it up by seven, seven fifteen. Yeah, I, I won't be that late. Yeah. I gotta I gotta get down to lock one by then. Do you have radio? I do, but okay. yeah, he, Channel 13. Yep. And he'd be up, we'll come get you down. Yeah, he wasn't answering down there, but um, I'll have all right, cool. All right, how far is the next lock? Okay. Thank you. You too. Well, that was much friendlier and much easier than the first lock. I got to the lock at 7.22 and it's 7.32. Lifted and on my way. So the next step is to find, hopefully, someplace with a bank that's not real steep. All the banks over here are really muddy. It's been muddy the whole the whole way so far. And I've gone about 30 miles. So I need to find hopefully some place where I can pull up to the bank and maybe find some firewood. Because I got some food to cook tonight. And I'd like to do that. I got a stove too, but I wanted to cook a steak on the campfire. Well let's get going and find some place. They're losing daylight. So we're pushing dusk here. I'm gonna have to find a spot and they're few and far between. You can see the bank over here. And not only is it muddy, but it's steep. Right over there, there's some deadfall. And it looks like I might be able to tie up over here. So this is about as good as it's gonna get, I think, for tonight. So let me go ahead and tie the boat up and start getting situated. All right, first things first. So I'm not sure whether I'm going to find something up there where I want to hang a hammock or maybe pitch a tent or I might just lay a tarp or stretch a tarp out over this because the bimini only goes so far forward and any sleeping area would be on front deck or rear deck, which I haven't done yet. So um, let me check this out up here real quick. looked a whole lot better when I tied up. I didn't realize it was this steep. Well, it was a little steeper than I anticipated. So I worked my way up the hillside here and now there's a spot up here that might actually work. This is actually kind of cool. Check this out. Nice little flat spot right there. I don't think I can set up a tent there, but I bet I could do a hammock. And the only other question, and check this out. Look how pretty that is. Super calm. I haven't seen another soul on the water since I've been out here. 
and that's 35 miles. No one. Maybe I'm the only crazy one. <laughs> so let me check this out over here. This looks like a game trail going right through here. Kind of muddy, a little bit of sand. Yeah, I don't think I want to pitch a tent, but it's going to come down to hammock or sleeping on, on the boat. At the very least, I'm probably going to come up here though and try to build a fire. Because I really like to have a nice dinner. Well, I gathered a little bit of firewood, but coming down that tree and it's muddy up there. And I almost slipped twice coming down. And the last thing I want to do is break a bone, end up with a mechanical injury out here by myself. That would not be a good evening. So I think I might... Um, I might cruise up the river just a little bit further, see if I can find a flat spot, because I really would like that campfire. But at the end of the day, um, might just have to do without it. So I'll see what I can find. Well, at lock master, uh, lock number two said it was 11 miles to the next lock, and I went farther than I thought, because there it is right back behind me. But the good news is, got a lot of rocky beach up here, so but this looks way better than the last spot glad I decided it was only a mile to come up here so nice I can work with this it looks much better now I just have to find some firewood Jackpot, y'all. Alright, so kind of a mess. I don't know where to start, but the good news is I got a beach. I've got firewood up there. So all I need to do is get a fire started. And the rest will just kind of fall into place. So let's open up my backpack that I haven't dug into in years. But I've got pretty much everything in here and then some. Lighter. Still works. Extra headlamps. I got soap. I got a toothbrush. I got so much stuff in here. Got solar chargers, rope. Got my butane stove, burner. Oh yeah, you're good to go. I thought I had all that stuff, but I wasn't quite sure when I left. Got my fire going. Gotta work out my sleeping arrangements still, but this isn't bad. This is a hundred percent, a thousand percent better than the last place that I tried stopping. So I'm glad I motored on up a mile right here at the lock in the morning. Wake up late, the lock doesn't open until 10 o'clock. So let's, uh, let's work on sleeping arrangements so I can get a good night's sleep. And by then we'll have some nice cooking coals. We'll get some dinner. All right, y'all, got the campfire, coals are getting good. Did a little rearranging back here and I just took a tarp and I secured it in the back. Got the bimini up, but the bimini just doesn't go back far enough. So this should keep the dew off of me anyway. Got my good sleeping bag and got a mat down 
It's an inflatable, and I got my pillow. So that should work. It's time to grab something to drink and head on over to that campfire. And I'm gonna relax, because I've been working and I am drenched. So I'm gonna chill for a bit. Ugh. Finally, get to sit down and relax. All that running, 35 miles, left at four o'clock today. I think it's probably about 10 o'clock at night. You can't see it on camera, but there are so many stars in the sky. It's beautiful. You can hear the dam, the waterfall over there in the background, overflowing. Got me a cooking stick right here, and I think I'm gonna throw a steak on it cook that over the fire. I got some asparagus and I got a sweet potato I picked up earlier at the store. And I'll figure out some way to cook that on the fire too. Didn't bring a grill or anything. I wasn't wasn't really thinking that far ahead. But this works. Get this steak on the fire. That looks good. That fire is hot. I'm have to back up. Got that sweet potato in there roasting right now. Asparagus, I couldn't figure out how to cook that without dropping it in the sand. So I just ate it raw. But we'll get the steak going. Hopefully that sweet potato will be done here in a minute. I think that steak's about done. And that sweet potato is either gonna be really good or it's gonna taste like a charcoal briquette. I'm not sure yet. I meant to grab aluminum foil, but that's one of the things I forgot. Last time I did a potato like that was in Boy Scouts. It was terrible. <laughs> we'll find out. Oh, this smells good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm on God. Uh, like a cross between bacon and steak. That is delicious. It's been a long time since I had a steak cooked over a campfire. Mm-hmm. Well, that steak was delicious, but when I pulled the sweet potato out, it was black on the outside, but it's not cooked on the inside. And now that I cut it, I can't really put it back in the fire. So, unfortunately, I don't think that sweet potato is going to make it. Steak and asparagus, delicious. All right, y'all. It's time to turn in. All right, so I'm going to give this tarp ago although it's got a lot of condensation on it so i might have to rig something else up but i'm gonna try to get some shut eye got a long day again tomorrow so see y'all in the morning mm. Mm. looks like a pretty good morning a little bit cloudy but temperature's nice weather looks pretty good First things first, gotta get water boiling so I can make coffee. Today we're going the easy route. Decided to do that outside of the boat. I didn't want to set my boat on fire, it's too nice of a morning. completely soaked from condensation. I don't know if it's just because it's a little foggy and dewy or whether it's the, the dam over there creating even more moisture, but there's a layer of fog over there. 
from the spillway. But it's going to take a while for everything to dry out. All my bedding and everything, I've got to wait before I can put that away. It's kind of damp. I should have brought my sponge with me because I hate a dirty boat. Got mud everywhere. It's mostly sand, but it looks like mud. And I got everything put away, all the bedding and tarps and everything, so now I'm just waiting for this lock to open. I've got about another hour to kill time. And I got about 40 minutes before they open this lock, so I'm just gonna enjoy myself a sandwich for breakfast. They didn't bring any breakfast food. It's nice out today. I'm going through lock three, heading up to lock four. And the lockmaster told me Frankfurt is about 25, 27 miles from here. So we'll see if we can make that, get some gas, turn around, and run it back. Let's run it again. This is the first river camp I've seen since I got on the river, and I'm 53 miles into this journey. That's 53 miles from the mouth of the Ohio. And the cool thing is I haven't seen a single soul today, other than the Lockmaster. I haven't passed a boat. I only saw one boat yesterday, so that's amazing to run 50 miles on a body of water and never see a soul. It's August, so school's back in, and that might have something to do with it, but I don't know. It's kind of cool having the place all to yourself. So just exited lock four, and I'm officially in Frankfurt. Come again? He's calling a tour boat up here. That was the lock master. So he's on the radio, and the last lock was on the radio too, which makes it nice. Found this little marina tucked up here. Topped off gas, took 12 gallons. And if that's all I used, I'm shocked. It's not bad, actually. So what is that? 12 gallons and about 65 miles. It's noon, nobody here. And it's Saturday. So I just saw the sign just as I was leaving. It's Port Benson Marina. They had gas. I don't think it's ethanol free gas, but that's all right. It's the only place with gas. Apparently the Frankfurt Boat Club, which is the other place to get gas, they don't have any. That's what the lockmaster told me. So at least this place did. So I'm gonna head back out of this marina and go rambling. Well, I was gonna go rambling, but I have a problem. I was going to go walking downtown, Frankfurt, but I have one flip-flop. My other one blew out somewhere. I just looked everywhere in the boat for it, and I had it tucked up underneath the seat on that back deck, thinking that would be 
secure. And like I always say, if it can blow out of a boat, it absolutely will blow out of a boat. And I never seem to learn my lesson. <laughs> uh, well, maybe Frankfurt's gonna have to wait for another day. Well, there's boat traffic up here. Another little marina over on the right. So I turned around, I'm heading back toward the lock, and I didn't even see that because it was behind me when I made the turn. That is gorgeous. Logmaster Lock 4. Logmaster Lock 4, go ahead. Yeah, this is Center Console Bay Boat, that green boat that just went through. Uh, requesting northbound passage, direct to Carrollton, please. Roger that, Captain. I'm just uh, letting the uh, Rock and Thunder jump boat out my feet, and uh, I got to shut my valve, cut it off, just hang up, 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 that was Kentucky speak for, he's letting another boat through, hang tight for about 10 minutes and he'll get me through next. Yeah, this Lockmaster is a really nice guy. Just had a conversation with him. He's telling Kentucky stories, but going down is a whole lot easier than going up. Not that going up is a problem, but you gotta hold your boat constantly and keep it off the wall and you know keep your fenders along the wall there because it's all slimy and nasty and I got a trolling motor on the front of my boat and it all the time wants to get broken off by something. Everything reaches out and grabs it, but yeah, this is smooth. All you feel is the drop, no turbulence, nothing. There's my guy up there. He's a pretty cool dude. Lock four headed south. One thing these lock masters do not like is wet, dirty ropes. So they'll ask you to keep them dry. So be sure to keep them in your boat let them pull them up like that right there so just north of lock four about 300 yards is buffalo trace distillery they make weller eagle rare blantons and i think a couple of others but pretty big bourbon distillery not much to look at from the river but i do like drinking the bourbon Lock number three. You can actually feel it falling. coming through here at night you could literally skip right across that dam and never even see it because you can barely see it in the daytime going through lock two so the times are pretty even coming back on the locks left frankfurt at exactly one o'clock i hit uh lock number three so Lock number four was at one o'clock right there in Frankfurt. Lock number three was at two o'clock. I'm at lock number two and it's 2.30. So 
so we'll see what the time is when I get down to lock number one. Make a good time though, and that's running 32 to 35 miles per hour coming back. Thanks, man. All right, have a good one. All right. I'm at lock one and it is 3.30, so from Frankfurt to the Ohio River, northbound four locks, two and a half hours. Not bad. Well, there's the final tally, 133 miles. Up and back, here we are again at the Ohio River. Man, what a trip. It was great. The locks definitely add a lot of time to the trip because you could otherwise run from the Ohio River to Frankfurt in about two and a half hours. The camping part was a little more challenging. I didn't realize this. I forgot to mention it during the video, but someone up at the marina in Frankfurt told me that the river has been really flooded due to all of the flooding in eastern Kentucky down in the southeastern part of the state. They call that a thousand year flood. It was pretty tragic. A lot of people lost their lives and that was only about two or three weeks ago. So that was the reason for the wet banks and all of the debris. And it otherwise would have been a little easier, I think. If you're gonna camp, just try to do it when it's drier and that way you'll have more options. Other than that, factor in the additional time for locking through if you do the trip. But all in all, it was great. And I would recommend it if you're up for something a little tougher and a little longer. If you like these videos, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit that like button. That helps us out a lot. We look forward to bringing you more videos like this really soon and thanks for watching.